Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Today, we're here to celebrate the life, a homegoing celebration for this young lady. And we're going to start this out. We're going to usher in the spirit of God, the power of God, the strength of God. Because how many know that we can't make it on our own? We need some help. And so we're going to pray for that help today, that he would be here for us, for this great family, this son, this daughter, this brother. We're going to pray. But most of all, we're going to pray that God would move for every single one of you in here today, that something would be said that would transform your life, change your outlook, to bring encouragement and hope. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, how excellent is the name of Jesus in all the earth. And oh God, we first just come to say thank you. God, we come to thank you for just being God. We thank you, oh Lord, for just another day that you have blessed us to be here. God, we have a task at hand today. God, we have a family at hand today. God, we first thank you for the precious life of Sister McCraney. God, we thank you. God, how she has impacted every person in here today. Now, Father, we have a family that's trying to put pieces together. And oh God, we know that you are the great creator. God, we know that even when it seems like no one is there, you're there. And so God, I ask that you would touch Rob, touch the, the son and the daughter and the grandchildren. God, as they stand here and sit here God, looking for that blessed hope for their loved one. God, your word says, blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so, God, we ask for the comfort of that only you can do for this family. God, strength that only you can give for this family. But even still, God, let each and every one of us here witnessing this glorious occasion. God, look to you to strengthen us. Now, Father, as we go forth with this service, God, we want you to get the glory. Yes, Lord. Everything we say, we want you to be glorified, magnified, and justified. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. And the people of God said amen. 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 Thank you. Now we're going to have the reading of the Old and the New Testament scripture by Brother Dwayne McCrane. In the book of Isaiah, yes, 66 chapter, yes, sir. 13 verse, he said, As a mother comforted his child, so will I, so will I comfort you. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew 5 and 4, he said, Blessed are they that mourn, for you are blessed. Amen. Amen. Singers, give us a selection. Amen. 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 
Community Singers of Akron, Ohio, Gerald D. Johnson, founder, words of comfort to the McCraney family. Be it resolved that Gerald D. Johnson and the Christian Love Community Singers wish to extend our deepest sympathy during this time of bereavement. It is indeed difficult to find words to express our regret as the passing of your loved one, but we pause at this time to pay richly deserved tribute. May their soul rest in peace, and they enter through their great celestial gates, the place where no traveler returns. May God comfort you and keep you in his care. Humbly submitted on this 15th day of March in the year of the Lord 2021. Gerald D. Johnson and the Christian Love Community Singers of Akron, Ohio. The United States Postal Service. Okay, y'all, this is what we gonna do. Everybody who got a phone, turn your phone off now. God is not trying to call you because if he was, he'd knock you out in a twinkling of an eye. Okay. So turn your phones off, please. Let's be respectful Amen. to the situation. Amen. United States Postal Service, resolution of sympathy. A resolution of heartfelt sympathy to the family of our own retired tour three mail processor, Tanya R. McCrane. It is with great sadness that the United States Postal Service mourns the passing of Tanya R. McCrane, mother of tour three automation mail processor, Shator Porter. Whereas the United States Postal Service has been formed of the passing of Tanya R. McCrane. Whereas Tanya R. McCraney entered eternal rest on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. Whereas we know the passing of Tanya R. McCraney has caused great grief to her family, friends, former co workers, and community. Whereas memories of Tanya R. McCraney will remain in the thoughts of many for years to come. Therefore, be it resolved that the United States Postal Service on this 15th day of March, 2021, does, does hereby extend sincere sympathy to the family of Tanya R. McCraney. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution of sympathy be given to the family of Tanya R. McCraney and a copy remain in the files of the General Office, Cleveland Processing and Distribution Center. New Hope Baptist Church a church where everyone experiences new hope through Jesus Christ. Reverend, Reverend David, Doc, Reverend Dr. David M. Nelson, Senior Pastor, March 15, 2021. Condol condolences from the New Hope Baptist Church at Ohio to the family of Tanya McCraney. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalms 23 and 4. The pastor, Reverend David Nelson, and members of the New Hope Baptist Church family offer our sincere sympathy to the family in this time of sorrow. We are praying that God will grant you strength to bear the loss of the loved one. Death of a loved one is never easy to endure. 
However, the Lord spoke in his word. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. You can depend on Jesus to keep his word. Death has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Be encouraged today to know that your loved one has gone to a better place. To this entire bereaved family, be reminded that death is the only means by which we can be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord says in his word, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, 1 and 2. Submitted in love, New Hope Baptist Church family, Reverend Dr. David Nelson, Senior Pastor, Deacon Demetrius Hardaway, and Deacon Chairman. To the family of Tanya R. McCrane, resolution. To the family of Tanya R. McCrane, Providence Baptist Church, be it resolved that we, the Providence Baptist Church family, share off for certainly heaven's gain of our dear sister in Christ, Tanya R. McCrane. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation 3.10. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God in his infinite wisdom, wisdom to call home from labor to reward our sister, Tanya R. McCrane. We know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We acknowledge Christ as her personal savior and believe that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. She was a very active member of this community and very immersed in the ministries of the church. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we having a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Yeah. Second Corinthians 5, 1 Corinthians 5.1. She has gone home to be with our Lord and Savior. She is free now, free from all sickness and pain. You will see her again in the morning, and our God will wipe every tear away and hold you in the palm of his hand. For his anger endures but for a moment. In his favor, his life, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalms 30 and 5. So let it be resolved that we, the Providence Baptist Church, mourn with the family and remind them that the Comforter has come for his servant, Tanya R. McClain. Let it be further resolved that the present, a copy of the ordinance of resolution be presented to the family and a copy kept in the records of the church. So ordered and submitted this 15th day of March, the year of the Lord, 2021, in service. Pastor Vincent E. Peterson, the first pastor, Providence Baptist Church. And this will be the last resolution. Resolution, Tanya McCraney, whereas Tanya McCraney, the beloved mother of Shatora Portis, has departed this life. Whereas the Cleveland, Ohio area local American postal workers union, AFL-CIO Local 72, extends their deepest sympathy to the family of Shatora. Whereas we know that Tanya is in a better place and that she met the welcoming committee on her arrival to the pearly gates. First, the giver of the perfect gift, God the Father, and all her relatives and friends. Whereas, we know that Tanya followed a reliable road map that she did not question, but tried to stay on the path. The way, as in John 14 and 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Her life ended here, and she was has reached her final destination, the Father's house. Whereas we, the Cleveland of Ohio area local American Postal Workers Union (AFL-CIO) Local 72, ask this family to focus on your lives and try to live your life as Tanya did, a life that might 
not have been perfect, but a life striving for perfection. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed on file at the Cleveland, Ohio area local American Postal Workers Union, AFL-CIO, Local 72, and a copy given to the family. Humbly submitted, DeLeo Freeman, President, Cleveland, Ohio area local American Postal Workers Union, AFL-CIO, Local 72, March 9th, 2021. This concludes the resolution. Amen. We thank Sister Banks. Amen. I know that y'all got scared when she said turn them phones off. <laughs> My phone is already off and I turned it off. <laughs> Amen. 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 It is always, I am Pastor David Sinclair Providence Baptist Church. It is always important for me, even at home going, to bring some bread and some, some life uh, into situations like this. When we hear that scripture that weeping may endure for a night, Joy comes in the morning. A lot of times we just hear it as words, but I always like to put it into context. Uh, when the writer wrote that, he used the word may. That word may in the Greek means it is permitted. So when you look at the text of the scripture, it says weeping is permitted for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Anybody in here over 35 in the room? If you're over 35, raise your hand. All right, so you remember when you used to get the permission slip, some of y'all lying because you're over 35. <laughs> when you used to get the permission slip that said, well, Bobby can go to SeaWorld, and it was at this time on this date. But that permission slip only lasted X amount of time. And when it was, the expiration was up, it no longer had any value. It had to be dismissed. And so what God is saying is, your weeping, your crying, your sadness, what you're going through now has an expiration date. Come on. It's going to happen, but for a little while. Because yeah. God said the expiration is going to run out on that. And then it will be replaced with laughter and joy and memories. And you'll look back over and the things that used to make you cry will make you laugh. That is the power of God. Yeah. So we want you to be encouraged. Listen, you cry, you mourn, however you want to mourn. I told Brother Bob, you ain't got to be strong for anybody in this room. Today, family, somebody is going to be strong for you. So however you need to grieve, you grieve. We'll be here to help you and pick you up. Amen? Amen. But know that as Grandmama used to, used to say, trouble don't last always. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, we are going to, I'm just going to flip the script just a little bit. And uh, I don't have on my dollar reader, so I hope I'm seeing his name. Uh, Chardé? Yeah. All right, Chardé, amen. Did I pronounce it right? Yes. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come and read the obituary for us. March 3, 2021. Born on August 23, 1965, to Larry and Cynthia McCraney in Barberton, Ohio. She attended Akron Public Schools, where she graduated from Akron Booker High School and then attended Mansfield Business College. She was employed at a bank before becoming a clerk with the United States Post Office, where she retired after 23 years of service. Tanya loved taking care of and making people happy. She wore many hats, but one of her favorites was this Nana to her grandchildren, Lucas and Sedan Jr., were her fondest moments. She was a foster parent for 15 years, caring for over 60 children who needed a safe and loving home. Wow. She always went out her way, helping others in need. With her quick wit and loving personality, she always had a way to make you smile. There was never a dull moment with her show-stopping personality and stay ready mentality. She will be truly missed by all. Tanya was preceded in death by her parents, Larry and Cynthia McCraney. Brother-in-law, Charlie Brown of Detroit, Michigan. 
She leaves many to cherish her beloved memory. Her loving lifetime companion, Robert Dalbell, son, Sadam Portis, daughter, Shatora Portis, grandchildren, Lucas Malone and Sadam Portis Jr., SJ, brother, Larry McCraney of Akron, sisters, Paula McCraney Brown of Detroit, Michigan, Erica McCraney and Laquita Pepper Russian, both of Akron, special nieces and nephews, Treasure, Matt Jones, Simondi, Jalen McCraney, Jay, and Jacob Brown, all of Detroit, Michigan, and the host of other beloved family and close friends. people, so I guess I represent folk. <laughs> Tanya got an eye on us. You see, look at her. She's watching us right now. That's a perfect picture. She likes to party like it's 1999. She was there 
for the Dadell family whenever celebration or a party went on. She took over. That was time. She, she is now. We're we going to miss her, but we're going to remember all, like the pastor said, all the good times. I didn't plan to come up here and talk, but God said, be ye also ready. So I'm here to say something to, for my sister. Because she is my sister. See, when we say family, we mean family. She's our family. She's my brother. And my nephew and niece. So I'm going to represent that and let you know that we got to keep tying in our memories and we got to remember the good times. Let's give, let's give her a, a, a clap in hand. We don't need no clap in and afterwards, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor, our brother, R. Stacy Jenkins. Amen. 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 Listen, don't y'all leave without hearing the word. Yes, yes. Y'all done went to sleep on me, ain't you? Don't y'all leave without hearing the word of God. You are here for a reason, even more so than you realize. There is something that God wants you to hear on today. Yeah. Like to just a little something. No, uh, our family. I call this my family too. We have been through it. This month. Yep. So many of our loved ones are gone. And, oh yeah. You know, so oh, I'm getting comfy with this song. I'm going up yonder and be flat. <laughs>
Jesusman said that grieving is the price you pay for love. It's a high cost. I want to first give you the scripture, and then I'm just going to share with you of just a couple things. There is absolutely nothing I say that could change the trajectory uh, of the destiny of Sister Tanya. Yes, her life has proven that you're here and you witnessed that. And I just believe God opened the door for her. Oh, that's right. yeah. Heaven belongs to her. Yes. Can I trip for a minute? Why don't you look at your neighbor and, 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 and just tell them, aren't you glad God is not like people? Ooh. That's something to think about because people can be a trip. If people had a heaven or hell to put me in, I wouldn't even be pastoring right now. But I'm so glad God is not like people. I've been privileged to um, share uh, a word with you today. I talked with Rob and Sedan and Shatura, and so I'm going to do just that. But my message is going to be entirely for each one of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so let me give you this scripture so you can say, well, that pastor didn't even open the Bible. I got my phone. That pastor didn't even preach the word. Here it is. Yes, Second Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 10, Rob. It says this, and lest I should be exalted above measure uh -huh. through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn mm -hmm. in my flesh. Uh -huh. Uh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should have been exalted above measure. For this thing, I came to the Lord on three occasions to take it away. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes. That That's all. That's all I can do. I want to just tell each and one of you a couple things as I always start services out this way. One of the first things is um, you don't have time. You've got to be ready because you don't have time to get ready. Can I get a witness? you got to be ready. You don't have time to get ready. And, and the next thing I would say, even every single one of you, under the sound of my voice, the multiplicity of ages that we are, on your best day, you're sick enough to die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the word, man. Right now. That's the word right there. Right now. And then the next thing I would probably let you know on a thought is, Two men in a burning building don't have time to stop and talk about who's right. <laughs> Come on, preacher. <laughs> yeah. Give him something to think about. <laughs> the reality is, the reality is, every single one of us is here on borrowed time. Yeah. yeah. You're here on borrowed time, and you don't know the day or the hour that God is going to call you home. Because ultimately, the, the, the allowance of your life or your death is by God. It doesn't matter what the sickness was, the corona, the, the cancer. Ultimately, life and death begins with God. Can I trip? I want to let you know that... While you're here, some of you might think this is the end, but this is the beginning. Yes, this is not yes, the end. Yes, and I want a family, I want to let you know that this is not goodbye to Tanya, but this is I'll see you later. Yes. Because one day, absolutely every single one of us will have to travel this route. Yes. And so the question is, you've got to stay ready. Amen when your name would be called. Mm -hmm. 
But let me help you today. What do you do? What do you do when 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 life makes no sense? Mm -hmm. What do you do? We have this virus that has turned into a pandemic that has taken over the land that have all of you except me in a mask and some of you are mad because I ain't got mine on. We have a system uh, of justice where there is oppression and there's racial bias that we're struggling with. We have people who have lost their jobs, lost their homes, lost their families. What do you do when life don't make sense? Because sometimes you'll go through things and, and, and you'll look at yourself or you'll look at somebody and you'll look at them and say, Mark, that just don't make sense. What do you do when life don't make sense? Where do you go when life don't make sense? Because I'm sure all of you are looking at it and had one of those times where life just didn't make sense. In the text, we got Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is one of the men who had wrote the New Testament. He wrote so much of the New Testament, and here he has a problem. What do you do when life don't make sense? But even greater, what do you do when God don't act like God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. We have expectations of God. Father, I pray and you answer. Father, I ask and you give. Paul says, I have went to the Lord on three different occasions. I went and, and, and I had a problem. I had a sickness in my body. There was something. They called it a messenger of Satan that buffeted me, that hurt me. And I went to the Lord on three occasions. And you know what, Chitor? The Lord didn't heal me. How could this be God? That's your job, God. What do you do, Robert? What do you do, Sudan, when God don't act like God? What do you do? We're fighting sickness. What do you do? Well, the Apostle Paul finished the statement because there's something that the Apostle Paul understood and realized that each one of us in here can realize today. That even though God didn't move the way he expected him to. He gave him grace yeah. to make it. Yeah. See, it's something about grace. That's why that song, you hear the old people say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. What makes grace so amazing for all of us? I'm glad you asked. Grace is amazing. Because it is by the grace of God that you're strengthened to death. Grace strengthens us. Uh -huh. The next thing is, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm apostolic. I'm gonna give you four points. The next point would be, what makes grace amazing? Grace is amazing because it is grace that sustains us. The grace of God will sustain you, family. It's going to be the grace of God that will lift you up. It's the grace of God late in the midnight hour when everybody is gone, the house seemed empty. It's the grace of God. So then it's just going to hold you. Mm -hmm. Grace strengthens us. Grace sustains us, Mark. But then the next thing we know, it is grace it's sure. We're sure by grace. Why are we sure? We're sure that Sister Tanya made it in by heaven to heaven, but because of grace. Grace strengthens us. Grace sustains us. Grace uh, uh, assures us. Grace is surprising. Grace is surprising. Well, Pastor, why is grace is surprising? Grace is surprising because... Did I ask you, aren't you glad God is not like people? Yes, sir. Hold that thought. Grace is surprising because when you get to heaven, some of the people who you thought was going to be there 
they're not going to be there. Grace is surprising because some of the people who you thought wasn't going to be there, they're going to be there. But grace is surprising if you yourself make it there to be able to see. Yes, sir. Grace strengthens us. Grace sustains us. Grace assures us. Grace gives us. But the reality is, I'm glad God is not like people. Because, because the great thing about God is he would have it that every single one of us would get saved. He would have it if it's his choice. See, that's called a provincial will. Mm -hmm. But then we have this mutual will. Mutual will is that we got to be ready. And the mutual will is each one of us have a decision to make. You got a life choice. You can put your reservations in now or you can do it later. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a candy, don't it? You can, but the reality is, it's appointed on to man to die once. After that, it's judgment. And then the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. I just dropped by to let you know today that God has a gift for each one of you. Are you willing to accept it? If you're willing to accept it and you say, you know what, God, I might have did that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because let me tell you, I'm glad that God does not consult my past with preparing me for my future. Oh, that was better than you gave me credit for. But because the reality is, man will look at your past. Man, look at what you've done. God sees your ending from the beginning. Yeah. And so the reality is, although you is drunk, high, smoked out, messed up, God see you as a deacon. Yeah. Although you is hoeing, smoking, drinking, God see you as a woman of God. I'm so glad that God don't look at my past. I'm glad that God don't judge me like people. Some of y'all is toe up from the floor up, but the reality is you ain't got to stay there. God has given you a chance to transform your life. People may have given up on you. They may have threw in the towel, but now is the time. Today is the day. You got to be ready because Sister Tanya was ready. Will you be ready when God calls your name? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. And so now some of us may say, well, Pastor, I don't know if I'm ready to do this. I came out of here. I came in here. Uh, I, I got some e and J. I got some Ciroc. I got some BSQ. Uh, I got some Hennessy. I got, I got, what else they got? I got some moonshine. I got some weed. I got all those things that I'm getting ready to party with. And I don't know if I want to give my heart to the Lord. Mm. Pastor, I smoke. Well, me not being Jesus, I can't say that smoking will send you to hell. Amen. What I can say is you might smell like hell on your way to heaven. <laughs> now it's an opportunity that each one of you <laughs> can invite God into your life. Ultimately, this appointment, you have an appointment with destiny. The great thing about it, and, and we being people of color, black folk, um, your cousin can't go for you. We being black folk, you can't be late. <laughs> This is an appointment that you got to stay ready. Yes. You got to be ready. Yes. Because one day God's going to call your name. Yes. Allow me to help you if you want to reserve your place with uh, to see this woman of God again, to see your loved one again. Let me help you. And it, and it goes simply by a simple prayer that if you would just close your eyes, maybe just lift up one finger and repeat after me. I just believe that uh, God will honor this thing that you say. Mm -hmm. And it simply is, dear Lord, dear Lord. 
I am a sinner. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died. And on the third day, rose from the grave. I repent of every sin. And I invite you to be the Lord of my life. Today. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. How many believe that? How many believe that? If you believe that prayer, you have, ju you have just now put in a reservation yes, for your eternity in heaven. Yes, and the great thing about it is it doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you came from. God has just forgiven you of all your sins. And you walking out of here white as snow. Now, one thing you have to be cautious of. Although God forgave you, people won't. Come on, now. Something about that. Jesus can forgive me, but people can't. I've been saved for 30 years, and I think I've seen two people in here that wanted to fight me back in 1982. <laughs> but I got the Donnell brothers here today. God bless you. If you believe what you pray, heaven belongs to you. And so this would not be goodbye for this woman. It will be, I'll see you later. Because one day, we all got, will be in that number. God bless you. Can everyone please remain seated until the director come to your row? We're going to get everyone out of the chapel first before we start inside. So please stay seated until the director get to your row. Thank you. Those standing along the wall, if you could come this way for your viewing, straight up to the side. Oh, probably. Look at the little seat. Is that going to go to you? Oh, you're going to go to the seat. I'm 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 going to go to the seat. I'm
clear the aisleway so we can get ready to exit out. Thank you. 